Guys, we're going to White Mills. Let's go! Fortunately, I still cannot ride, but don't worry. I'm going to be taking you guys on a little behind the scenes of how we film our wakeboarding clips. I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown of the gear that we use and uh, yeah, basically spread the knowledge on how to make wakeboarding look good. Let's go. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the tripod with the longer lens over on the other side of the lake. The sun is shining kind of directly down onto that feature, not too high in the sky. So fingers crossed we can make it look nice and crispy. I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna show you a couple of the shots and then I'm gonna talk you through all the gear and, uh, and what I think when, when, when I'm filming. I will say this camera and this setup is a bit of a mission to lug it around, but the, the, the the shots are definitely, definitely worth it. So I'm gonna find a nice little spot now, I think probably from about here. Looks nice for now. So I'm gonna set the tripod up. And we're gonna try and get some clips. I've got the Sigma 100 to 400 here. Okay, so the thing which I really love the most about this lens is just how punched in you can get. And yeah, filming on the camera, the Sony a7 IV, it's just, an absolute beast to be honest. I'm really, really stoked on this camera. I'm gonna finish filming the session and I'm gonna tell you all about these settings once the boys are done. Now, a little bit further away. Now I'm just gonna line up the shot. You can really see how there's such a difference, I'm gonna to have to adjust the tripod a bit, but when you can square up and make sure the composition of your shot is good, then everything just looks a little bit more appealing, to be honest. So I'm just trying to set this up right now. Let's see, get it a bit more zoomed in. I'm gonna lock that there. Bill? But yeah, I'm gonna film a few more clips from this angle just so you can see how much better it looks when it's really kind of punched in. Let's go safety back too, it's so windy. You got it mate. You got battery charge. I've got an FPV drone. Yeah, it could be cool, eh? Yeah, go on then. I'll give it a try. All right, let's go. It's on. I'm gonna explain all the settings for you guys later because right now the session is on. Don't wanna stop the man when he's ready to send it. I'm gonna get everything set up and we're gonna get to it. Obviously, I've got the AirPods in when I'm filming. You've got to keep the vibes alive, people. Let's go. You got to Feel the rhythm, man, when you're filming, especially. But right now we're gonna set up this. We've got the DJI FPV here. Let's go, this thing's an absolute machine. Obviously I don't fly it in full manual mode because it would crash for sure. But uh, yeah, so I fly it in sport mode. But the key is, the key is, a little addition in the form of a GoPro Hero 11 Mini. And I've got a small 3D printed mount as well, which goes on top of the FPV drone. Basically, the, the, the GoPro settings, you can just film and capture so much nicer footage. I use Real Steady as well. 
and of course you run in the ND filter on there as well. ND's on everything people, you need that in your life. I'm going to explain a little bit about those later, but right now it's looking pretty nice out there. I definitely think it's possible, I want to go back four I reckon. Left foot, safety back four, lock in on the tail, should be good. I just got to make sure that wind's not too much and get that first pull for the back, back 270. And then we're on! So whilst Liam gets ready, I'm just going to set up the settings on the GoPro now. So we're on with the GoPro. Now I'm just going to get this DJI FPV set up. We're going to get the boy out there and then we're going to see if he can make it happen. Let's go. Start and... Get away, baby. Let's go. sick that is oh why i love that gopro just silky silky smooth shots very stoked that liam got the back four as well you want to go again let's go the line is on okay so i've actually decided to whip out the air 2s the other drone man this thing is really nice for getting some flying backwards shots very risky must say but definitely definitely worth it in my opinion so 50 frames per second on the dji air 2s gives it a bit more punched in field of view so i'm going to launch this thing I'm hyped on that line. Pretty That's damn it. hyped. Gonna watch it. Yeah. We're on the old drone. Ooh. Wow, you filmed in an interesting way as well. Ooh. Mate, this is the this in my opinion is the sickest angle. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah. My D right, boss that. The next bit of kit, which is the 24 to 70 Sigma art lens this one unfortunately i didn't take too good care of it during the beginning of owning it i do now live to regret that there's a few scratches on the lens and stuff we're going to set this thing up on the a7 IV, hook it up to the gimbal we're going to get some silky silky smooth shots of lasley right now So I have been having a few little weird jiggles and wobbles with this uh, with this gimbal in that session, but whatever, we can always uh, try and fix it in post. And best thing is to just try and shoot a few different angles just in case something, uh, something doesn't go quite to plan and then you've always got something else to cut to. But uh, yeah, this is the Ronin SC2 gimbal. As you can see, I've got the camera nicely balanced on here. Right now I'm gonna dive into the settings in all of these cameras um, and the equipment which I also use. But that was sick, G, well done. Thanks, that was a sick session. Managed to get quite a lot of hits actually. I wasn't expecting a session like that. When filming wakeboarding, usually I'm filming 50 frames per second, um, but that can vary depending on the shot that I wanna get. So obviously if I want a slow motion shot, um, then I'm gonna up that to 100 frames per second this camera goes to. 
Uh, moving on through to the shutter speed. Now the shutter speed is very, very important when it comes to getting that natural looking motion blur. Um, the shutter speed is always, with exceptions on the GoPro, double the frame rate. So usually when I'm filming, I film 50 frames per second um, and my shutter speed is one over 100. But if you have nothing else on auto, then you're gonna see that the image is very, very bright. Now, in order to combat that, I said about them earlier on in the video, you have these ND filters. Now, these are essentially sunglasses for your camera. So you put that on the end of the lens. If the shutter speed makes the exposure too high, then you can adjust with these variable NDs to the exposure that you want. For the color space I film on this is Sony S-Log3. Um, that basically just gives you the most dynamic range of the footage. When it comes to color grading, I'll overlay the LUT here, which I use, um, and the conversion LUT. So by filming in this flat profile, it really allows you the most detail and, and color that you can get from the image. Other settings white balance usually 5500 Kelvin that is more or less daylight um, that basically controls how warm or cool the image is so I usually make it a little bit warmer if we're filming at the sunset or something just give it those nice orange tones um, but in the daytime yeah it's nice to have that nice blue sky as well so but yeah Sony a7 IV I've got a couple of different lenses which I use for this camera I am going to give you a quick tour of the lenses right now so come with me so we got the Sigma 100 to 400 exactly as I spoke about earlier this one great for those nice looking punched in shots but as we take a look over here into the box come and have a look in my box bit of a mess at the moment but I've also got this Sony 50 millimeter 2.5 aperture this thing oh is amazing really really love it that nice punched in again super dreamy with the 2.5 aperture love this lens and that's what I usually film a lot of the uh, of the b-roll with to be honest some nice cinematic walk into the dock shots you know how it goes Right, the other lens which I've got is this. Again, Sigma 14 to 24. This thing is so much fun. Gotta get up close and personal with this one, especially when it comes to filming, but I'm gonna put a little clip in right now of some of the clips which I've captured with this lens. Also love this one for photos as well. You get that really cool fish eye look and it just gives it a really cool, different perspective, so. A lot of time for this one. We're gonna have a quick run through of these GoPro settings. The GoPro is an absolute beast of a camera. Seriously, this thing can capture some incredible, incredible shots if you know how to set it up correctly. So I'm gonna quickly dive into our settings. Um, I'm gonna run you through them just so that you can get a better idea of how to set it up correctly. So first thing we're gonna discuss is the resolution and the frame rate. Now. Usually when I'm filming vlog stuff, it's 4K 25, but again, if we're filming wakeboarding, then we go 4K 50 frames per second. I don't usually go above 4K, to be honest. Just for Instagram, YouTube, it's more than enough. 16 by nine ratio as well, I just like that. Nice, 16 by nine, no need to crop it at all. Once you've set your resolution and frame rate, next up, lens. Depends again on what I'm filming with, super view, is pretty much my go-to now hyper smooth auto boost if i'm putting it on the fpv drone then i'll turn that off and do stabilization after capturing the footage but for the sake of it just whack it on auto boost 10 bit on very important if you want to get nice information and nice color from your footage shutter we will have on four times the frame rate with gopro's built-in stabilization you want this shutter speed to be four times so if i'm shooting 50 frames per second it's going to be one over 200 as we come down further white balance again 5500 kelvin iso min 100 iso max 400 sharpness we have on low 
everybody should be rocking low sharpness on the GoPro. It just looks, with the medium or the high sharpness, I'm not sure, something just doesn't look quite right to me. So color we have set on flat. Again, this is because then you're gonna be able to edit the colors the most in post-production and get those really nice popping blue skies, nice sunsets, you know how it goes. But yeah, the GoPro, as previously mentioned, has got to be one of my all-time favorites. Um, and yeah, great camera. I'm pretty sure that wraps things up. I think I've covered everything that I can. Filming has been a serious, serious rabbit hole. Since the creation of our YouTube channel, we have spent a lot of time learning about the art of filmmaking, of filming, photography. And yeah, it's so much fun being able to make and capture just amazing looking shots really is, I don't know, I, I just I just love it. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, then please make sure to like, subscribe. We are gonna have a lot more interesting content coming your way as we approach the off season. I'm not yet sure what, but uh, we both got some big plans in store. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.